Now there are many factors that come to play when it comes to diabetes itself. Diet, other nutrition, other nutrients per se, and so on and so forth. However, for one molecule to play such an incredibly important role in regard to the development and potential reversal of insulin resistance in regard to diabetes is astounding. And this revolves all around coenzyme Q10. You'll understand more why in a second. But to proceed, in the public release title, titled as follows, simple molecule could prevent alleviate prediabetes in regard to coenzyme Q10, restoring levels of coenzyme Q10, otherwise known as coenzyme Q to the rest of the article, a key molecule in energy production in cells could overcome insulin resistance or prediabetes, a precursor to type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease. To excerpt more from that particular article itself, quote, importantly, by replenishing coenzyme Q in mitochondria, either in cells or in animals, the research we're speaking of, we're able to restore normal mitochondrial oxidants and reverse insulin resistance. Key word there, oxidants, and obviously in regard to insulin resistance. Unfortunately, the public uh, article or one released to the public doesn't have the, uh, I should say, the finesse in regard to the explanation that is really elaborated on in the full study itself. For the rest of this, uh, presentation, we're going to go straight to the full study because the full study explains it in great detail and gives you a better understanding as well. A little technical, but trust me, you'll be able to pull out the important parts. To proceed, as follows, the defect was observed in a range of vitro insulin resistant models in adipose tissues, in fat tissues, uh, from insulin resistant humans and was concomitant, concomitant with lower expression of mevalonate. CoQ10 biosynthesis pathway proteins in most models. Again, a little technical, but please bear with me. Pharmacologic or genetic manipulations that decrease mitochondrial coenzyme Q triggered mitochondrial oxidants and insulin resistance while CoQ10 supplementation in either insulin resistant cell models or mice restored normal insulin sensitivity. That one sentence, basically in regard to pharmacologic or genetic manipulations that decreased mitochondrial CoQ or coenzyme Q10, triggered mitochondrial oxidants. Now go back to the first part of this presentation. When they said oxidants somehow enhance or cause insulin resistance. But to proceed, specifically lowering of mitochondrial CoQ caused insulin resistance. Now it begins to sink in. And adipose sites as a result of increased superoxidized hydrogen peroxide production via complex two. Obviously we're talking the mitochondria, complex one, two, three, and four, if you've actually studied the Krebs cycle and such. These data suggest that mitochondrial CoQ is a proximal driver of mitochondrial oxidants and insulin resistance, and the mechanisms that restore mitochondrial CoQ, or coenzyme Q, or coenzyme Q10, may be effective in therapeutic targets for treating insulin resistance. To go into the detail, again, of the study, the full study, as follows, I'm going to read kind of fast. Mitochondrial structures that produce most of the cell's energy supply appear to play a role in the development of insulin resistance. Again, we're kind of reiterating some of the things we're covering in the first part, but it's important. Mitochondria converts nutrients such as fats and sugars into molecules called ATP that fuel the many processes required for life. However, ATP production, adenosine triphosphate, can also generate potentially harmful intermediates, often referred to as reactive oxygen species. Otherwise, you'll see often referred to as ROS or oxidants. Previous studies have suggested that an increase in the amount of oxidants produced in mitochondria can cause insulin resistance. And so to proceed, this led the team to find the concentrations, I'm going skipping a little ahead, a molecule called coenzyme Q, in a cent or coenzyme Q10, an essential component of mitochondria that helps produce ATP were lower in mitochondria from insulin resistant fat in muscle tissue of people. Basically, all right. Further experiments suggested a link between lower levels of, co of uh, coenzyme Q and higher levels of oxidants in the mitochondria. Replenishing the mitochondria of the lab-grown cells and insulin-resistant mice with coenzyme Q, or coenzyme Q10 in this case, restored normal oxidant levels and prevented the development of insulin resistance. Kind of makes it kind of interesting because those of you familiar with mitochondria, it kind of infers that 
diabetes or pre-diabetes per se is a mitochondrial disease overall due to the fact is if the body can't use energy appropriately due to depleted levels of coenzyme Q10 per se, uh, there's other factors besides that, then the mitochondria, in simple words, goes haywire, like a bull in a china shop. To proceed, this is important too. Keep in mind, this is gonna take a little bit, uh, I don't wanna say a jab at statins, but it brings it into question. Strategies that aim to increase mitochondria coenzyme Q levels may therefore prevent or reverse insulin resistance. Although CoQ10 or coenzyme Q supplements are readily available, swallowing coenzyme Q10 does not officially deliver coenzyme Q to mitochondria in humans, so alternative treatment methods must be found. In this case, they injected it into the animals. All right, but this is the important part. It is also of interest that statins, common drugs taken by millions of people around the world to lower cholesterol or also lower coenzyme Q and have been reported to increase the risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Further research is obviously called in to regard to statins and coenzyme Q10. But think about it just this way. If the statins per se, without going off on conjecture, uh, lower coenzyme Q10 levels, and lowering coenzyme Q10 levels result in these reactive oxygen species being generated by the mitochondria, you have a lot more to look at than just diabetes itself. Now, it's the amount that was done and how they did it in regards to the animal model. Now keep in mind, this is an injection. However though, from here you can extrapolate your own hypothesis potentially with your healthcare provider in regard to how much CoQ10 was actually used or could be translated potentially to human use and or trials per se. Here we go. You notice the study was only done 14 days. 14 days with animals reversed insulin Resist resistance, or I should say restored insulin sensitivity in normal mitochondrial function. 10 milligrams a kilogram with a liposomal coenzyme Q injected every 48 hours for the duration of the, the feeding, uh, which was basically in regard to 14 days. So it's an amazing, amazingly important discovery in regard to how coenzyme Q, or in this case coenzyme Q10, plays a role in the development of diabetes when it's too low and its potential reversal if these animal studies translate uh, coherently to human trials reversal of insulin resistance by restoring appropriate mitochondrial function or i should say the powerhouse of the cells per se again this is ralph Turchiano signing off a little long a little technical so please forgive me but I hope you find this information of use. And as always, thank you very much for listening. And I look forward to seeing you all once again in seven days. Catch you then. Bye.